Hey, dude. The 90s call with Christine Taylor and David Lasher. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Hey, Dude, the 90s called. I am your host, Christine. And I'm your other host, David. <laughs> We're hosts of Hey, Dude, the 90s called podcast. Nice to um, see you, Christine. Nice to Always. see you, too. It is a miserable day in New York. I've heard. Bl- blustery windy cold rain like not the pretty like refreshing spring rain it is like things are blowing all over it is I, are they I, calling it an atmospheric river like they do in oh, la no i think that that's 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 saved for la yeah you never <laughs> I, think it's just, like that. I think it's just cold city rain here oh, okay. um but uh how have things been for you uh well i guess the the highlight of my weekend uh, was my daughter Hannah was home uh, for spring break. She had gone to Miami and came home to spend, you know, four or five days with us. So we just had such a nice time, played some tennis and we had dinners and just really caught up with her, which is like, you know, when your kid goes off to college, like every day you get to spend with them. I'm like, oh, you want to play tennis with me? I'm there. I'm showing up. <laughs> Tell you know? me more. Exactly. I want to hear yeah. everything. Oh, and our guest is here in the waiting room, and it is uh, the one and only Richard Kind. Let's invite him in. All right, the greatest. Richard! You know what's really, this is, this is the highlight of my day. <laughs> I, I, Ours too. Who is that? That's, who is this, that? Is, this is David Lasher, my, co- my podcast co-host. Nice. My God, Richard, I feel like I know you. I, you're, you. You're one of those actors that I'm sure you get this all the time, that people feel like they've known you their whole life. I mean, yeah, and your voice as well. It's, it's just so recognizable. It's it's scary. It is scary. I, I, I'm i sorry. It's, it's uh, yes, even my, my uh, wife and children are leaving me. They just don't, will not take this voice anymore. <laughs> it's awful. It's awful. No, yes, I know. I've been around, and and it's when when you run into people who think that they know you, and uh, or that they went to school with you, or you right. might be related, and then they go, "Oh yeah, yeah, yeah," and they go, "Oh, are you acting anymore?" <laughs> <laughs> oh God, they really are out of touch. I feel like you have to be, and obviously, I have known you for thirty plus years. I mean, you were one of the first. Pe- you were one of the first people I met when I moved to Los Angeles. Crazy. I know. And David, it was, in fact, to tie this all together, I met Richard when I, when David Pressman, who be, then became my roommate, and I were doing an episode of Blossom. Is that how you met David? That's how I met David Pressman and Andrew Hill Newman. The three of us were guest stars on an episode of Blossom, which this David Lasher starred on. Um, and Richard, you came over to the dressing room. You were shooting, um, was it Herman's Head? No. No? Was it Spin City? Was it what? No. Could no, it wasn't It was Spin Sunset City. Gower Studios in the early 90s. I must have, it's, it must have been a guest thing. I had yeah, it a, yeah. It might I have been. I at Sunset Gower. I did, because I met David. Pressman. Because, David Pressman, because <laughs> Matt Perry was guesting on Empty Nest with me and also... And this okay, th- that's the connection because uh, Paul Witt and Tony Thomas produced Blossom. They also produced Empty Nest. That was probably... I know that. That's okay, but that's my connection to you. But Is that all, more all 80s? Was that, was that was Empty Nest 80s? Late 80s? I don't, I don't know, know if they were still doing it in the 90s. I'm sorry. I yeah. thought maybe yeah. that was the connection. No, but, but I mean, I, that's how I met David was right. through Matt, who was guesting that day, and I taught them to play poker in my dressing room. Oh, God. So you're the one responsible for all of the, all of the gambling. I, that I, I really am. I am. <laughs> and, and I'm very, very disheartened by how the gambling got out of hand, because it really got out of hand. I mean, you got people playing, you lose thousands of dollars in an evening. And well, yes, goes. that yes, I think that's what started to happen with a lot. I mean, I, I know f- for a fact because my brother got into some of those games and he was working as a PA. He was not a working actor and he <laughs> would go to Matt these Levin? poker games. Matt, Matt that's like Brian and Matt Levin were were roommates and they were going to these poker games as if they right. were like employed actors. 
losing money. It was, you're right. It did get out of hand. The, the- it got out of hand. And I'll tell you the worst thing, because in poker, you have to be cutthroat, right? I mean, you know, you've got to, it, it's, it's, an, it's an awful thing. I mean, you really have to lie. You right. know, pre- pre- you don't have a good hand when you have a great hand. It's, it's underhandedness. And I look at those guys and I was making a decent living. I never made the, the living that they all ended up making, but I, I would sometimes fold or I wouldn't bet because I didn't want them to get hurt. That's the opposite of poker. I was going to say a poker player with a heart is oh, a, yeah. a crappy poker player. I, you know, I, I have, I have a very, very silly, stupid game here uh, in, uh, in New York where, where we play. It's a silly, silly game. Many of the players are very well known. And some of the players are theater people who don't make the kind of money that we're lucky enough to be making. And I, or me, or one's a musician and, and an actor, and I, it just it kills me to take from you. Them. Throw the games because you feel bad for the other players. That is a beautiful. It's a beautiful thing. Uh, it is. I know. I and I, I I am proud of it, and I'm disgusted by it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Your wife must think you're the worst poker player alive. Yeah. No. no. I was gonna say, Richard. I feel like you are. You know, we I have known you for a million years and you have always been within our friend group. The most the person who everyone does the most impressions of. And literally, I I told when I was texting you about coming on the show, we had Bonnie Hunt on a few weeks ago. How is she? Tell me everything. Incredible. I mean, it's my it's my life's mission to to be her best friend. I I just don't live in LA and I want to spend more time with her because I think she's incredible, but she gave you so much credit about at the very beginning, you loaning her some money to, to go off and take a chance at something. And, and she did this great impression of you of how, how, because she said, let me pay you back a little bit at a time. Okay. (laughs) Let's let's start with this. I lent a lot of people money and, and the day, it was a lot of money, but it wasn't that much. And it wasn't such a big deal. They were going to pay it back. And what does it matter if it's in the bank or if it's helping somebody out? And it really wasn't that much at the time. It seems like that much, but I didn't, but I have, there's a list of people who I gave the money and, uh, and it's, Bonnie just wants to be like Carol Burnett, have somebody who gave the money and then they went <laughs> off to New York and, and became a star. I, 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 I I, I didn't do that much. Now, her impression of me, <laughs> everybody does an impression of me. Everyone. I can't do an impression of me. <laughs> I can't do a Richard kind. I can't do it. I can't do it. Yeah. M- most people can. There are only a few people who do a really good impression of me. But you know a guy named Tom Virtue? Would you know that name? That's an, a familiar name. but I, He yeah. was the father on Even Stevens. He's, he's an actor, wonderful actor. Okay. Doesn't work as much as I'd like him to or he'd like to. But he does. I went to college with him. He does such a good impression. He knows what I'm going to say. <laughs> he, 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 it's not just that he does an impression of me that sounds like me. He does an impression of what I would say. And the only way, and I, I've said this on other podcasts, the only impression that I can do of me, and it's easy, is one time we were at a poker game and they said, can you, and we're going back to the 90s since, dude, this is the 90s, the reference, <laughs> this must have been back in the 90s, is uh, someone said, Richard, are you going to be playing this week? And I said, no, I'm doing a commish, but <laughs> this is how it sounds. No, I'm doing a commish. Oh, that's good. <laughs> that's a, that's that's a good know. Richard Kind impression. <laughs> that's, that's Bonnie Hunt know. said, what did she say? I don't want it in installments. I want it in one lump sum. Who said that? Bonnie you, Hunt. That was what Bonnie said is the way you said to repay her. Not uh, You didn't yes. want installments, just one lump sum <laughs> when that she was ready. She, because these people felt guilty right. that they had borrowed money. There's no reason to feel guilty. What the hell? It's, it's money. You're, you're my friend. So she said, I'll pay you back uh, $100 a week. I go, no, no, no. I don't want that. Uh, first of all, I'll lose track. So don't think it was so 
uh, um, you know, uh, graces of me, but I would lose track. And I go, no, when you have enough money, you pay me back. I don't right. want it in moments. I don't need, what, what do I need? A hundred dollars a week? <laughs> she turned it into a very funny imp- impression though. <laughs> He's very, he, well, Bonnie Hunt is the greatest. I agree. And you say you want to be her, her best friend for a while. I was her best friend or one of her best friends. I was the lucky one. She lived in my apartment while I was up doing. What was I? Was I, I think I was up in Vancouver doing a show and I said, stay in my apartment. It's easier. I, you know, can I tell you something right now? This is the honest to God's truth. I know I'm a nice man. I know I'm very um, philanthropic and blah, blah, blah. But I was in L.A. recently because I wanted to get out of the East Coast and, and get away from the snow. Kids are out of school, so I'll go there. I had three people living in my apartment rent free. <laughs> because one is going through a divorce. One was heavily saddled by the strike and really didn't have much money. And the other is a young woman who's making her way in New York. So they were living in the, in the bedrooms in this apartment in New York. You know what, Richard? Not everybody is like that. And, and I just want to say, mm-hmm. when, I look at, when I look at your career, it's remarkable that you have worked for, I don't know, 30 years consistently. But you know what? You get back from the world what you put out into the universe. And I feel like you deserve everything that you've achieved. I, I guess so. But nice people deserve nice things. I think I'm a nice person. We don't always get it. But yeah, I think nice people deserve nice things. And it comes yeah. back and, to you. And yeah. I think good people deserve to go to jail because of the crimes they've committed 91 times. Uh, there you go. <laughs> there okay, you go. Let's move into the 2020s, huh? Okay. No, no, because I what I've never heard and we have to go backwards. We have to go like before pre 90s, because I just want to hear and you can I'm sure you've told it a million times. But the the brief version or whatever version you want to tell of how the hell you got into this industry. Was this something from like from childhood? You were a performer. You were on stage. I've told it before. Uh I, having been raised near Trent, New Jersey, in, in Bucks County, Pennsylvania, I would take the train into New York, and I loved Broadway. My grandparents lived here. They taught me. I, when I got to the age to go into New York, New York City alone, I would come and I would see a matinee and an evening show. Then I'd go home. This is all by myself, or actually with Brian Iani, uh, uh, who was a, a really good friend. He li- liked the same things. So I always wanted to be an actor. They're kids who want to be rock stars. They're kids who want to play center field for the Yankees. <laughs> it doesn't happen. Right. They're, 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 you, you talk about it, but you, you don't do it. Yeah, it's and not real. It's not a reality. Yeah, it's it's right? not real. It's, yeah. you know, when you're four years old, you want to be a fireman. Then you want to be an astronaut. Then you want to be a ball player. <laughs> then you want to be a rock star. And the, then you go and you become an accountant. Uh, <laughs> exactly. So... Uh, uh, but I always wanted it. And my dad's best friend, when I was supposed to go to law school uh, in the spring before I went to law school, he said, go try acting. Because when you're 40, you're going to resent your wife and your kids because you have to keep working and make money and you never got a shot and they're keeping you from it. So try it now. And I was I was good. I was I wasn't as good then as I am now. I, I never should have had the career because I, I, in retrospect, I sucked. I really was not good, but I was big and I was loud and I made an impression, but I wasn't very yes, you were You were unique. I'm, you were, right? You could. You, Who's going to go into showbiz with this face? <laughs> <laughs> that, that you, 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 it's different. It's no, no, nobody should. Uh, and I just tried it for one year. One year turned into two and the four. And ultimately, I, it took 20 years. I became better. I, 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 it took 10 years when I was in Second City. I started getting a sense of myself, and I was employed every night. Wait, you trained at Second City? I didn't just yeah. train. I, I was on stage. Oh, I, so that's I where you met Bonnie, that was probably. The, yes. We were on, we were on stage. Yes. We were the, I had been there about two and a half years. 
Bonnie will tell you, she, I, because she's so kind, she goes, I would come to see you. She'd come to see Second City, but she came and she studied me, as is, is, is I've heard her say that before. <laughs> and you're saying you weren't very good. I mean, keeping up and making it at Second City meant you were sharp. You were quick. You were funny, for, right? For a year and a half, I was dreadful. You must understand. <laughs> and and I, I, I never got great, but I got very good. Uh, what I am is... Um, I, what happened was with, with Tom Virtue, we, we, we were living as roommates in New York, and there was a group called, you probably know it, the Practical Theater Company. You ever hear Practical Theater? Yeah. It was started by Julia Louis-Dreyfus, uh, uh, Brad Hall, her husband Brad Hall, Gary Kroger, and a guy named Paul Barras. Who, and they were all snatched up uh, to go to Saturday Night Live. They were improvising in Chicago. Uh, right next to Second City. And they said, uh, we're all coming to New York. I used to party with them. Why don't you go to New York or to Chicago and do a show for our theater company? We did. Second City saw me there and said, would you come and be in Second City? And I didn't have to go through any of the main, any of through the touring company. I didn't have to take classes. They just picked me up. Now, trust me. There were people who made dartboards with my face on it because they were paying their dues. And here oh. I just go straight onto oh. stage. You jumped and over. My, my training was in front of an audience with all these people, and I was not good. What I could do was listen. Megan Fay, who was there, said, just look in my eyes and just listen. And that is what I did. And I'm a pretty good reactor. As far as being funny and saying funny lines, all right, I can be funny. I, I can say witty things, but not with the alacrity that these people could do. I mean, some of these people were tremendously witty and funny and, and uh, heads and tails funnier than me. But I'm a better actor than they are. And I am a better reactor. And my sense of reacting could take a scene into places where just funny people might not. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yes, yeah. So you, you really, to, to have both was sort of the magic, the, the special yeah, sauce. And there, and trust me, there are people who are hilariously funny and no story. Uh, and th those people are geniuses. Uh, I was not. I was good and I got better, but I was never great. Uh, and then uh, and then from there, you know, I, I, you get a, you're on stage for four and a half years. Every night, uh, performing, improvising, uh, having a sense of, of confidence on stage, you know, even the worst of us can get better. And I got better. And then I went to L.A. and I, I got work. And even dur during that work, I got better because mm. I didn't know how to act in front of a camera. L l l listen to me. I'm too loud. The camera is very small. <laughs> and I'm screaming like this, like, you know, <laughs> and, and I'm. Because I'm on stage, I'm I'm still performing, so I I ended up getting better over the years. And yeah, did you have a lot of directors tell you to bring it down, bring it oh, down? Oh God, yes. <laughs> well, the funniest thing, you know, uh, uh, Christina knows, knows uh, Craig Bierko, who once said that the astronauts were up in space and they saw two things: the Great Wall of China, and every acting choice Richard Kind ever made. <laughs> Stop. That's good. So uh, that's that's what it is. But I I uh, I got smaller, and <laughs> and I know how to play a camera and play a microphone and stuff. But like the that. sitcom work, the sitcom work is not so far from uh, a Second City type stage play. You know, it's, you are it's, correct. Mm -hmm. Well, no, okay, we'll be more specific, especially being in the nineties. Four camera sitcom in front of an audience, right? Is very theatrical. Right. Yep. So I've said this before. I got to work with two legends, Michael Fox and Michael J. Fox and Carol Burnett. Carol Burnett can play the camera and play the audience at the same time. Mm -hmm. She's unbelievable. She's not the most subtle woman in the world. When she's <laughs> a single camera, she knows how to, uh, how to do it. But when she's in front of an audience, she plays the camera. And plays the audience. Michael Fox only plays the camera. 
but he needs the audience for timing. Mm. He needs to play them and ride those laughs, and he's a master of it. Was Spin City your first big break, or was it Mad About You? Which came first? Mad About You came first. Oh, uh, wow. Actually, so- I, I, was, I came to town in October, and by the end of the month, I had a series that was a drama, because coming out of Second City, I didn't want, I, people would know, oh, you're Second City, oh, you're funny. I didn't want people to know that I was just funny. So I got into a very gruesome one-hour TV show called Unsub. What? Unsub. I call it Unsub what? Unsub. Unsub <laughs> was, the, was the FBI term, U-N-S-U-B, unknown subject. Oh. Uh, okay. It was a cop show where we chased serial killers. We were, you know who Peter Roth is? Yeah. Yeah. Peter Roth was head of cattle at the time. Yep. And he said, and he's right, he goes, Rich, we were the first. We were the first procedural. We were about uh, 1989, maybe yeah, around that time. And that was the, the, the first one. Uh, and Emmett, M. Emmett Walsh, who just oh, died. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, he was in the show with me, and I, oh. he, he became a very dear friend uh, through that. Yeah. That was, uh, it was quite, it was, a, it, was it a good show? No. It was a show, but we were the first procedural. And every time I see Peter Roth, Peter Roth is known for hugging people and he hugs me and he goes, we were the first. And, we were, we were the <laughs> and you got a show one month into coming to LA on the air. I mean, unbelievable. You're like, yeah, this that is doesn't easy. happen, Richard. That no. doesn't okay. happen. And, okay. But well, here's the thing. Okay. Here's me. Here's the reader. Here's Stephen Cannell. So I'm looking at the re at the casting agent and right behind is Stephen Cannell. And I'm, reading this thing and behind I see Stephen Cavagon. Oh, <laughs> oh that's, I a, that's a good I'm sign. Doing the best audition in the world. And then I find out Stephen Cannell just loves his words. And he just does that. <laughs> oh my God. No, he just <laughs> loved he, he loves he does that for everyone. He's, loves hearing he loves anyone say his, it. <laughs> he loves hearing his words. So he was just I, I, but uh, but yes I got I got the person. Then I uh, that's canceled after uh Three, well, you know, after, uh, well, after the first pilot episode, I'll, I'll tell you a little thing that the, is the night before our, uh, before Cannell showed Brandon Tartikoff the pilot, there was a very famous incident where Geraldo Rivera uh, did a, a show uh, on witchcraft and all the reviews were this is the low point of TV. This is how much lower can TV get? He then sees the show the next day in the screening room and halfway through, they all in the neck and he stands up and goes, what the fuck are you trying to do? Break down this <laughs> network single-handedly? And they just knew that this, we were 11 and out. But, uh-huh. uh, but we made them all and it was a great experience. Then I did... Um, uh, an episode of a show, uh, another guy who's dear, dear friend who passed, and Christine, you must know him through, through certainly through Ben, was uh, Richard Lewis. And oh he was my on God. a show. Yes. Yeah. He was on a show called Anything But Love with. Uh, uh, yes, with Jamie. Jamie. Yes. yes. Yeah. I, I did a special, a, an episode that was especially lovely, and it, it, it fed right into what Richard Kind does. I fall in love with Jamie Lee Curtis, and I'm just this intern working at the place and I have these puppy dog eyes and I had all these scenes with her and I I would may say I made a splash but on the producer I did and the producer was somebody who, who was there a woman named Marsha Brandman knew of me I then went in and I auditioned for uh, Carol Burnett and I did a TV show with Carol for two and a half years and that was great that I loved and then from there uh Oh, yeah. And then I did Mad About You. And then I did. Yeah, but I you see, I was I was fired after the first year or at least not picked up. I'm mad about you. You but you were you on the, the, the run of the show? I tend to. I, I've had I know this sounds crazy and I have had the best career in the world. 
And one of the things I like about my career is I don't, with the exception of like Spin City, which was six years. And yeah, it was six years. Uh, I, I don't do stuff that goes on for a long time. I go bop, the bop, the bop, the bop, the bop. And Spin City. Um, I did the first year of uh, Mad About You. We started out the first 13 episodes just as guest stars. So I go and I do the music man in North Carolina at some uh, at Summerstock. I did two shows. And while I'm there, I get this call. They're not picking you up for the next season. I go, but I wouldn't have gone on. I would have tried their work. And they didn't pick me up. And that was terrible. And then I went through a year of pilot season. Then I got Spin City and yeah, I was okay. And then I went back to Mad About You. Uh, uh, during the, like, well, I think like the last year or so, I would do occasional guest spots on the thing, uh, as a as the character. But yeah, my wife stayed on. I did not. I was very upset with Paul and with a guy named Danny Jacobson. It really upset me that they fired me, but they fired me. Mm-hmm. Like until- I know it's always just a blow to the ego when you find that they're they're oh, not going to be the renewing. They yeah, they're not going to have you not- back. They're not going to have you back this season. They, they're going yeah. another way with the storyline or, oh, you know, they, they cushion the blow. But I think, Richard, the, 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 the sort of through line for you and you, you brought it up just talking about doing Music Man. I mean, from the time I've known you, like you said, you would bop around. You would do this, you would do that. You and and through all of that, you were always doing theater, whether it was always. Summerstock, whether it's community theater, whether it's Every, Broadway. Yeah. Like, yeah. Musicals, plays, um, your love of an theater. Opera. I did an opera. You did? Huh? Yeah, <laughs> I did God. A, it's a comic. It's, it's Candide, but it's an opera. Still, yeah. that's an opera. Yeah. Um, and, and, and voiceover work. I mean, you... All well, of voiceover it. work is, is, is not... Voiceover work is the opposite of theater. In theater, you, you got to work. And work hard. And I really like to work. And you have to rehearse for three, four weeks, sometimes six weeks, with the prayer that you're going to do well and you don't make money at theater. You just don't. There's a finite number of people who can see it each night. There's a finite pool of money. In TV, who knows how much money they're charging for commercials? There's Who knows how many people are going to see it? So it's the op and voiceover work is, hey, I'm showing up in my pajamas. I didn't even shower or shave. Let me kick this off in 20 minutes and go home and collect money. It's the opposite of theater. Yeah, but isn't it nice to sort of have that little like back oh, pocket? No, no, no. <laughs> I love it. And it's acting. Yes. But I, you must understand, I love it. And I get to do a lot of different stuff. I get to do Big Mouth. I get to do Mickey Mouse's a Fun House. I mean, yeah. it, I, go, I go from sperm to, to you know, <laughs> stuff like that. My kids love Big Mouth. Uh, yeah, well, your kids love Big Mouth and little three-year-olds <laughs> love uh, Mickey's Fun House. Right. I'm, I, I'm not disparaging uh, um, uh, voiceover. Voiceovers are a gift. They're just a gift. Yeah. You do it. Nobody sees your face. You get to do <laughs> so many different types. It could be the, the best job in the world. It's the best job in the world. Yeah. Oh, how about those people who say, I want to be an actor? Really? What kind? Oh, I want to do voiceovers. <laughs> well, who doesn't want to do voiceovers? Christine and I talk about I this all the time. Yeah, we, it's, we have... it's, it's our running joke. We cannot get voiceover work to save <laughs> oh, our lives, well, Richard. Okay. Yes, I, you heard, have to yeah. know somebody. You have to but know somebody. I am somebody blessed and cursed with this voice. <laughs> yes. No, no it's, it's amazing. It's a great sound like this. <laughs> I ain't exactly going to play the most villainous roles in movies or stuff like that, although I, I have. But I, I, I have somewhat of a comic voice. I mean, let's just remind our listeners. I mean, I, when I hear your voice, I think of the movie Inside Out. Mm-hmm. That character, mm-hmm. that purple elephant or whatever mm-hmm. that was. And Big Bob. I am Big Bob. Yeah. Or as mm-hmm. I came out the door one time and someone looked at me and he goes, oh, my God, it's Dumb Dumb. <laughs> <laughs> Big Bob. But I mean, uh, you know, A Bug's Life, the Cars franchise, Toy Story 3. I mean, these are amazing movies iconic iconic big bang is like i am the jiminy cricket for that generation yeah i I am very lucky i'm i'm blessed i'm i ride the coattails 
of many geniuses, Pete Doctor mm-hmm. being one, uh, John Mulaney being someone, Ethan Joel and Ethan Cohn. I'm just lucky. Can um, we stop lucky. right there? Because I want to just say we need to talk about a serious man. We just, Quinn had a class at school where they studied, it was called Bible, the Bible is literature, and they studied the book of Job. And for his final assignment, they could they could write a play or do a scene or something, but or they could watch a serious man and analyze this this sort of modern retelling of the Book of Job. Ben Ben had seen it before; I hadn't seen it, and so the three of us watched You've it with Quinn. It? I had never seen it. Can you believe that? I think Ben saw it at oh, the no. at the premiere. You know who loved it? Your mother in law. She lo- yes, she loved it. She loved it. Yes. And you in that film are so brilliant. Uh, and it that. is, I mean, first of all, it's just, it is an extraordinary, an extraordinary piece of movie. filmmaking. As Ben said, as we watched it, because Ben, as the director, can't even, he can't help it. He was like, every shot oh. in this movie is perfection. Every shot, every frame. Back to a serious man. It, had you, did you know the Cohen brothers? Did you, had you worked with them before? What was the process? Some of this is very funny. Uh, okay, let's relive that time. They came out with two scripts, Burn After Reading and A Serious Man. George Clooney, my best friend. <laughs> Your bestie. <laughs> yes. Yes. <But> <laughs> Godfather to my oldest daughter and uh, best man at my wedding was working, had done uh, 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 the little brother where art thou? And he's told me that the uh, brothers like me. I had never met them. So, so I, I knew that they were, they, they were doing this movie. They, they said, Oh, there's a really good part for Richard. And if George told me, I get these two scripts, one's burn after reading. And there is a two page monologue by a a lawyer, Tilda Swinton's lawyer in Burn After Reading. I worked on that and worked on it and worked on it. And then there was a scene where I want to say a lawyer in, uh, it wasn't a lawyer, maybe it wasn't a rabbi either. It was some part in Serious Man, maybe whatever it was. I worked and worked and worked and worked and worked and worked on uh, burn after reading. I, mu- I went in the office. I must have done it five times ago. Give me another shot. Then I read for a uh, serious man. And I didn't care. I didn't care about it. Anyway, I, in fact, I had just gotten off an airplane the day before. And uh, so, but I didn't care about serious man. I didn't understand it. Burn after reading. I did. Um, so I do the reading and they say, this is, <laughs> this is the killer. I, I, I knew that they liked me and they said, very good. Would you go out and would you read for the lead? The part that Michael Stuhlbarg played. I said, listen, I'm talking to Joel and Ethan Cohn. This is, uh, I, I just got off an airplane and stuff like that. I, I didn't study. Let me go home and study the part and I'll come back in. I, you're not, you're doing this after you do run after reading. I'll come back in. They said, okay, good idea. Never got called back. <laughs> No, uh, no. So I could have had the lead, but I never read for it. <laughs> oh, that's a lesson, right? If they ask you to do a cold I, read, I, I, it's I, the Coen I brothers. Think I still did the right thing. Right. Why would I want to do a half-assed job? Go home and work on it. That's right. true. Study it and then come back. You want me? Oh, I'll be happy to. I didn't make a mistake. God just works in mysterious ways. I, I, I got a part that I think I was much more suited for. Do you think your audition for Burn After Reading helped you get the part you got in, in uh, Serious Man? No, my audition did. You'll, you'll, you'll hear it. It's, it's going to mm-hmm. come. They, they knew I could act, but I really wanted the part in Burn After Reading. Uh, I go off to do, again, Damn Yankees. Yep. <laughs> and I lo- you're always in- sprinkling in some musical theater yeah. just for, but for I, fun. Then, so I'm doing The Devil and Damn Yankees down at some theater in Texas. I think in El Paso, it could have been, I don't know where it was. And I get the audition for uh, Serious Man uh, to do uh, Arthur. And 
I talk, and Ethan, or, or Joel wants to talk to me before we tape. And I, the, um, the the director, I, I thought there would be people who would be good to read. They were horrible actors, but there was one intern who was pretty good. And I asked him, would, would he work with me? And he did. And I spoke to Joel before, and he said, nothing is too big. Nothing. He goes, just lay it out there. Just, be, you know, when you're at the you're at the pool, your life is bad. Just let it all out. You've been waiting for that for years since your Frank second Diergo, city. Call, yes, exactly. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but the, and the thing is, I went, oh, okay. And he goes, and he told me this story. He goes, Bill Macy during Fargo, you know, he had a, bang, if you remember that, when he was just so fed up, he banged on the roof of the oh, car. Yeah. And Bill Macy said, that they're going to laugh at me, bang on the roof of the car. They're, no one's going to believe that. And uh, he goes, trust me, they will. He goes, I can't go back to New York and doing that. It's one of the most memorable things in the world when he's up at the, at the, the top of the, you know, everything's wrong and he starts beating the car. Yeah. And so I'm like going, I, I, I can't, I, you know, I, I can't even <laughs> remember the words. And I'm at the pool just so, so sobbing. And, he, and I got the job. I got the job over on tape and I hear, and he's so nice. Do you know Pat Moswald? I'm sure of you course. do. Of course. He, Pat, yes. we had him on the show. We had him, we had him on this a little bit ago. One of, yeah. the, one of the finest human beings in the world. He's the type of person that got 25 hours in a day. We all got 24. Patton gets 25. You're so <laughs> right. He, he knows movies. He writes. He yes. acts. Yeah. He does stand up. He's, he's politically active. He's the best there is. He's one of my favorite yep. people. I know him. And, you know, he's a friend. I can't say close, close friend, but I adore him. He's yep. taken parts away from me many a time. <laughs> However, this one I took from him. Uh -huh. he this is oh, he was up for he that. Thought, he thought he was going to get it, and I took it away from him. And he, he, the, certainly that will be. I'm, I'm blessed with gifts that keep coming in my life. And that was one of the gifts. Uh, uh, Serious Man is one of the gifts. Very special. Uh, yeah, Inside Out, one of the gifts. I've, yeah. I've been like, mm -hmm. We should recreate the Kevin Bacon game. Six With degrees Richard? of yeah, British I, kind. I, mean, I, I, I am now, I, I, I truly am. But look, look how many th things I've done. I, right. I, I know people, they, it's just, it's, it's silly. It's just silly. And I, mean, I love, too, that when you say, look at how many things I've done, Ella just showed, first of all, Ella said she ran into you recently and that you're doing Bye Bye Birdie at the Kennedy Center. So that was my, I didn't even oh, have wow. to research that, <laughs> which is so exciting. But um, but she showed me a clip of something that you did, a, a Girls 5, Eva, with Sarah. Is that hilarious? With Sarah Bareilles. I was peeing in my pants. Hello. The napkin, the the tissues in your thing, the you, your <laughs> self deprecating take on yourself, um, was brilliant. That is so funny. And they wrote it. They wrote right. it. I, they had some things in there that I said, nah, let's not say that. Let's say this. But um, uh, that brilliant, brilliant woman, Meredith Scardino. Yep. Uh, uh brilliant. She Girl wrote five Eva, right? On yes. Netflix. Yeah. Someone told me yesterday it's the funniest show. It's oh, it's a great to, show. It was one of the funniest thought. shows ever made. Yeah, but but they well that, that whole Robert Carlock, Tina Fey, uh um um Jeff Richman uh factory. They're they're great. They're, Are you gonna continue on that? Are you oh, no, do it? it's literally a three minute cameo. It's so it's good, not, David. Oh, okay. David, you gotta look it up. I'm it's genius. It. You will die. I texted you, uh, was it last summer at the Tribeca Film Festival? Because I had a I had done a short that was in this evening of shorts. And there you pop up. It, it, you were talking about that you're in so many things and you jump around. Oh, I know. What you're, 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 you're talking about the short uh, yes. uh, proof of concept. It was so oh, good. That's it wonderful. Was, it was such Smart. a good short. But here I am Smart. thinking like, how terrific. Like you, I I feel it at this stage in, in my life, in my career in my fifties now that it's sort of like, I, I, it's ego free when it comes to work. It's sort of like if a friend or, or if it's a short film, which is for, 
for no money. It's sort of like I'm paying to do it because I have to transport myself there and pay for the meal. All those, it, it doesn't matter. It's like the joy in and, and the luxury too. Like I think there's that's the other thing I can say. It's like I I have the luxury of being able to do jobs like that. But but we to, do to, we do to have no ego about any of it. It's it, I I feel the joy. Like you said, you love it. And I just feel that in every single thing you do, that you I just know, love I, to work. I do. And it's infectious. Ah, I don't know how infectious it, it is. is but it, <laughs> it's uh, it's nice. Well, you know, if, 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 uh, if a young actor says, you know, what do I do? The first thing I say is don't do it. That's the first thing. <laughs> uh, uh-huh. But if they say, I, I say, do plays, become good. You, you, yep. you have to become good. Then do everything. You know, here's something funny. I'm doing a show. Uh, I have one day tomorrow and three days next week. A show called Evil. Okay, it's on uh, Paramount Plus. Uh, the people who created are great, great people, great creative minds. The Kings, and why not? It's a guest spot. It's two episodes. It's not that much money, and I play a judge. And in the first episode, all I'm doing is saying, uh, well, the defense is the defense, you know, uh, sit down, please, objection overruled, just stuff like that. And there's no dramatic arc. And then I'm reading the second episode, same thing. Um, does, would, would, would you like to respond? Uh, does defense, uh, does the defense rest? Sit like that. It's judge <laughs> talk, judge talk. Judge yes. talk. <laughs> and then I have a one and a half page scene. That is so, and I'm going, why, why, why did they hire me? And then I have a one page scene, one and a half pages. It is so good. It's so good. Now, I didn't take it because of that. But that is, I, I, when I read the, the script, I said, oh, that's why they want me. So I get to do that. And then I thought, they're paying me not a lot of money at all. But who am I? Think back to when you're a young actor. And, and, and there are people around today going, I kill, kill mm-hmm. for two episodes on a show. And the money is not in hundreds. It's in thousands. It's not that many, but it's in thousands. What? what? I'm a, and I get to go to work rather than a Wednesday where I'm sitting at home all day. <laughs> Doing a podcast, <laughs> you know. And I go, yes, of course, I want to do that. Yeah. It's what I do. This is yeah. what I do. It's what I do. I'm, I'm, it's it's what I do. It's the love of the work, and also and love it. Well, and, there is no play, no better place. And you'll both know this. There's no better place to be than on set, right? Yep. But yeah. also remembering where you came from, and that you know, a top of shell, few thousand dollars is not what it's about. It's it's not. It's yeah. I get the work. I remember the first time I turned something down, and I'm a superstitious person, and I said, "I'm never going to work again." <laughs> right. The, the I just jinxed it all. I jinxed I it all. Yeah. The who? What kind of hubris do I have that I'm turning down work? Are you Are you kidding me? <laughs> who am I to turn down work? Yeah. Now, Christine, your husband looks at twenty scripts a week has to turn this stuff down. I don't. Right. I get to do everything. Can my agent and manager mix and match and weave to, okay, I would shoot this Tuesday, then I have to fly to Seattle to work Friday, Monday, and Tuesday, and then come back and do some. But right. When and, that, let, takes, and that's, let them do that. Right. Let them yeah, sort but, of weave it. Yes. Right. But when Ben takes something, that's a three-month commitment. Right. And I got to do it. So he has to turn stuff down. Right. I don't. Right. I don't have to. I so and and I don't want to do what Ben does. Ben has to be <laughs> too famous. Ben has to work too hard. Ben has to <laughs> shoulder a movie uh, where ben, Ben's listening to this. He'll be listening oh, to he? this right now. But, no, he, but, he 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 will be. He he listens to every episode, and he's going to be nodding in agreement with you. Well, <laughs> but he loves it too, though. He, he loves does what love he, it. He does. But, but, but he, he does. has economic concerns too, because if his movie fails, he doesn't get the next great script. It doesn't matter what I do. Right. 
I, I, no, no, people will say, I, oh, Ben Stiller has a new movie. I'm going to go see a new Ben Stiller movie. Oh, I saw the new Ben Stiller movie. It's dreadful. <laughs> you know, what, what, what are you going to do? They go, I went and saw um, uh, uh, this movie. Oh, you know, it was, in, it was Richard Kind. Movie was terrible. He was funny. It doesn't matter. I, I make <laughs> nobody uh, the movie here's was terrible. And here's here's eighteen dollars. <laughs> Let me see the, the the Richard Kind vehicle. No, there is a lot of freedom in being one of the great character actors. There really is. There is a tremendous. I my shoulders mm-hmm. and my neck do not have the tension <laughs> that Ben Stiller has. I get it. I get it. <laughs> no. You listening, you know, Ben? You hear that? The yeah. tension. <laughs> the but, shoulders but, but, and the neck. But also, when, when he takes <laughs> something. An industry opens up uh, because dry cleaners have to uh, get work. Hotels will get work. Um, uh, crews will get work. Uh, you know, all sorts of people, caterers. I, I'm right. just going, you know, I'm, it's, show it's up. a different, I show up. It's, a different, up. it's yes. a different, it's a different, and I love it. And by the way, may I say, because you said I'm in my 50s, I don't know how you look so good. And I've seen you in person and I now see you on on screen. Oh, Richard. It's, it's ridiculous. You, oh, you're, <laughs> ridiculous. you always so make me blush. And, and another yeah. question. Is your mom still with us? Yes. Joan? Yes. yes. Give her, well, jo- wait, you Joan? Have mother? No, really? Joan. Joan Taylor. You know, the, yeah. I, I, I'm Christine Joan Taylor and she's the, the OG yeah, she, Joan. She was very lovely to me in those early days. I, yes. We've been in each other's lives for a long time. And you talked about yeah. there's no better place than being on the set. And it made me just think of going back, kind of coming full circle to it. it David, it was us, me becoming friendly with David and Andrew Hill Newman on that set, like just guest stars bonding, you know, Mm -hmm. and then leading to meeting you like uh, on a lunch break. And it like, that's the joy. I feel like there's, there's all these, um, yeah, I mean, listen, you're, you're, we all had our groups, you know, like we had the white squall cast on uh, a group of my friends, but you guys, Matthew Perry, David, the movie with uh, Matthew Modine. No, it was Jeff Bridges and a whole group of young guys that we, I that oh. I came up with. But yeah, a lot a lot of people do, especially now. I did summer stock, and I and I became so close. I mean, you're you're sleeping with these people. You you say, "Oh, I'm going to stay so close," and you do, and then it dissipates, and then you yes. don't. But I'm still friends with my uh, uh, Spin City people. Uh, I know I have a, a, one of the guys on Spin City. He was in the uh, uh, the Vietnam hotel. I can't remember what it was, but like Stephen Weber and all those and, and uh, Don Cheadle, they all remain friends. You have your white squaw people. Yes. So you <laughs> must. You, you have your people. You you remember. And I'll tell you something else. They're, like Irving Berlin said, "There's no people like show people." Yeah. Oh, Richard, thank you. We've we've taken yeah. up a full hour. And this went by in a in a flash. It, yeah. I, well, I, now what do I do? Just go back and lie in bed in my underwear. Well, now you're dressed. You're dressed, and you've got your yeah, teeth brushed. No. Oh, maybe go. I'll go outside. No. Why don't you go singing in the rain? <laughs> Practice your musical skills. That's actually <laughs> right. not a bad idea. It's Take so it miserable because out there. Because when you go on the on the lamp post, you know, when you swing around, a lot of COVID and germs. <laughs> yeah, you're too old for that stuff. Can't do it. Yeah, uh, <laughs> they haven't uh, washed it down. <laughs> It was so nice to meet you, Richard. A pleasure to meet this you. This was awesome. Richard, I love yeah. you. I, I love, love your you. family. I love you to your whole family. Please. I will. You too. You too. Everyone. All righty. Uh, I love you guys. Love. Yeah, I love Thank you. Thank you, love Richard. You. See you later. Bye. Thanks, Mike. Bye. I mean, really, what a sweetheart of a guy. And what a force, right? <laughs> like, yes. it's just Richard starts. And I can't tell you, David, like, knowing him for the 30 plus years that I've known him. And then our daughters were in the same class together at school and graduated high school together. And so I would see him at all these parent events as well. At, wait, at- wait, didn't you know him from <laughs> your LA days? Yeah, no, we yeah. met when I was in, when I was 22. Right, I mean, so you met her during, yeah, when you were doing Blossom, but then you yes. became, you, that whole friend Our group whole was- circle, yes. yes. I mean, we were, it, like, Richard was always out of town, like he's talked about, like doing- right tours of musicals like that's he just but every time and he is such an upper west side staple here in new york city like 
you'll just see him. And he has a, like, I was going to bring it up to him, but I didn't want to make myself conscious. He has this great purple golf sweater that you can spot like a mile away on the Upper West Side. It's like purple, a purple. Like his, like his character, Bing Bong. <laughs> exactly. It's a purple V-neck and he would wear it to like the parent things at school. I think it's a golf sweater that he got from some golf club. Um, but I will see that purple sweater like he where he's like, ah, I just I'm just parking the car. And I I run into him all the time. And he's just like home. He's just family. He's seriously. It's no like it's play on words. His, his last name is kind, but he really does seem like the <laughs> sweetest guy. Yeah. Like you just want to hug yes. him and hang out with him. <laughs> <I know>. <laughs> <laughs> and has no problem. I mean, he he what I love about him, too, is he he gives himself all the credit in the world and also is the most self-deprecating person in the world. You know what I mean? Like he's all of it. He, he knows he's worked hard. He knows he's gotten better over the years, but he's also like, person, which I loved him saying that I know I'm a kind, I'm a generous person. Like if you can say that about yourself, that's like so important. Yes. Yes. Um, Anyway, um, that was so much fun. Yes. Awesome. Um, And that's going to do it for us, but uh, come back next week. We got another fun one. Another have fun a great one. week. Every, yeah, yes. next week's going to be good. Yes. Um, have a great week and thank you for listening. Thanks for listening. Make sure to subscribe and give us five stars. And please follow us on Instagram at Hey Dude, the 90s called. See you next time. 